Good morning, boys and girls. I have a little message for you. Here you go. Good morning, boys and girls. I was going to. Good morning, boys and girls. I was going to say I'm shocked, but actually I'm not shocked at all. At how many of you got it right? You're going to be mommy's and daddy's virtually a baby chicks. Oh, it's fake little guys. You ready for the big reveal? You want to see what they look like right now? Not much like chicks. There's a mama hen looking out for them. That's the incubator. This is day 13, but when you see it, it'll be day 14 because I'm recording this the day before. And I have right here my little reminder about the chicken life cycle. So you have a hen, right? And the hen lays the egg. Now, you can't tell if an egg is going to form a little chick or not unless you actually crack it open, which isn't a good idea unless you, you know, decide that you want to eat the egg instead. But there's a little dot on the eggs that have babies inside of them. Because not all eggs have babies inside of them. Like the ones you get at the grocery store to eat. Those don't have babies inside of them. And believe it or not, this little dot is what turns into the baby. And this yellow stuff around it, the yolk, like when you open it, that's actually what the baby chick, as it grows up, it eats all of that. So that's its food, its nourishment. Did you know that? Isn't that crazy? Then inside the egg, the chick begins to form. And I want you to look at something really important right here. Do you see how if this is its head, it hides its little head underneath its beak? I mean, its little head underneath its wing with just its beak poking out. out. And that's for a very important reason. So then we get over to this side. And the little chick starts hatching out, makes a little, what we call a pit, breaks out of the egg, dries off, and we have a chick. And then that chick turns into a chicken. Chickens can either be hens or roosters. So I don't know what we have until they hatch. So if you look here, these are the days, what it looks like for the development inside the egg. You probably hear the puppies right now. I'll show you at the end. But because it's day 13 today, I can show you what's going on inside the egg because that was one, two, three, four, five. Look at that. Six, seven, seven. So on the seventh day, that's what it looks like. Hello. Oh, wait. Okay. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. What? Inside the egg today, there's actually that little chick that looks just like that. Isn't that crazy that it's already that much formed? And then we'll continue and move on, but I'll let you know about that later. So here we go. Are you ready? There are certain settings that have to be really important. So it's on 38 degrees Celsius. That's really important that it stays at that temperature because if a mama hen we're sitting on eggs and keeping them warm. That's about what her body temperature would be to keep those eggs that warm, right? And then if you look in the bottom, there's a little bit of water at the bottom. And that's so it keeps the humidity in there. It makes it moist a little bit. And so what I have to do three times a day, and there are some fancy um, incubators. And actually, this one had an egg turner, but I think and it's just better to go in like this. So we have all kinds of neat looking eggs, right? And to turn them, I just go like this. Not being hard, I'm not gonna crack them, don't worry. But I just take my hand and I make sure that each one of them is rolled. Never facing straight up or straight down, okay? But you roll them because you wanna make sure on the inside, they, are not going to stick to the inside of the eggs when they try and get out. So 
that's all that that does. And I can't keep it open for that long, but do you see all these beautiful different kinds of eggs in the different colors? So we have all kinds of chicks, all right? I'm gonna put the lid back on. Make sure I unplugged it a little bit. That's okay, it'll heat right back up. So it's like the mama hen. This is my reminder, she's going back to sit on her eggs to keep them warm. And so like during the day, you figure she has to move a little bit. So that's what that turning does, except she kind of wiggles her little bottom, okay? So they're doing well, they're doing well. What they need from you mostly is they need to know that you're learning about them and that you're preparing your minds and hearts. And they're probably gonna need some serious pep talks here because they're kind of like us, kind of just stuck, can't go anywhere. You're just waiting waiting for the time when they come out and see everybody, okay? So that was pretty cool. You got to see them firsthand, right? The first time you got to meet your little babies, okay? So you're learning all kinds of stuff in the nonfiction realm. Let's just enjoy a story um, before you get busy in the day. One that is about eggs escaping. It's going to be super cool read. And it's by the same author, a story that you listened to last week. So I think you'll find like the mood and the tone and the illustrations familiar. Get your schema going and make those connections. And then today in math, oh, you get a little visit on my farm. You're going to really enjoy that one. Okay. I love you guys. Enjoy the story and then get on with your day. The Great Escape, written by Jory John, illustrated by Pete Oswald. Howdy, I'm Shell, an egg. How's it going? It's just me today. I'm on my own. The other eggs? Where are they? Good question. The thing is, sometimes they leave the carton on weekends before the customers arrive. They escape into the store. They call it the great escape. Escape. Eggscape. You get it? Me? I'm not really in the mood to run around. If you want to know the truth, I'd rather just sit here. I don't mind a little me time. No reason to go frolic with everybody else. I prefer adventures of the imagination. It's quite peaceful here without all the other eggs. Sure, there's a part of me that wonders what they're doing right at this very moment. I have a few guesses. Right at this very moment. Wee! Yay! Ah! We look amazing. So festive. Let's play a game. Everybody pick a good hiding spot. Great idea. Shell will have to come find us. You won't know where we are. I'm behind a tomato. I'm next to the avocados. I'm blending in with the potatoes. Ha ha ha. What's so funny about that? Being a potato is serious business. <sighs> this is the life. When you live in a carton with a lot of roommates, you never get much peace and quiet. So I'm going to enjoy this while it lasts. <sighs> exactly two hours, 36 minutes, and two seconds later. Hmm. Nobody's back yet. Where are Clegg and Meg and Peg? 
and Egbert and Greg and Shelby and Shelly and Sheldon and Frank. Another Frank? Did I forget anybody? Anyway, they should have been home by now. The great escape are usually over by lunch when everybody gets hungry. I'll just wait a few more minutes. They'll surely be home quite soon. No reason to stress. No reason to pace. No reason to get all worked up. Noon? It's noon? Morning is officially over. Okay, now I'm getting nervous. Where are my friends? Are they okay? Should I go look for them? But what if they come home while I'm away? I just don't know what to do. Meanwhile. I must find them. Where do I start? Maybe in aisle one. That seems promising. So I just downloaded the free browser extension, Honey, and I'm going to see pickles, pickles, pickles. It's all pickles. Sheesh. Wait, Greg, is that you? What are you doing by those pickles? And why are you painted like a galaxy in outer space? I'm hiding. But why? Why not? Well, I found you. Indeed you did, Shell. Indeed you did. Shall we look for the others? Indeed. Found you. Found you. There you are. Found you. Is that everybody? Line up eggs. Let's see. We have you and 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 you. That's 10 eggs plus me, which equals 11. Hmm. Wait just a minute. Where's Meg? Has anybody seen Meg? Meg! Wait, where are you guys going? To get some lunch, Shell. Then maybe take a nap. Hide and seek is tiring. Meg will turn up eventually. She always does. Eggs halt. As the old saying goes, if a fellow egg is hiding, we must look until we find them. Or maybe that's a new saying. Anyway, we're not finished until we are all back together as a dozen. Got it? Good. Let's go. Greg, search the high shelves. Peg, check the low shelves. Click, don't forget the middle shelves. Sheldon, look through that bag of marshmallows. Shelby, comb aisle five. Egbert, investigate aisle six. Me, I'll scour the discount aisle. Meg has got to be around here somewhere. Shell, Shell, I found a note by the cash register. It might be a clue. Well, read it, Greg. Okay, okay, you don't have to yell. If you want to find an egg, just like a pot of gold, go where things are sold in bulk and look for something bold. It was a clue, Shell. I mean, it is a clue. Indeed, Greg. Indeed. Hmm. Bulk. Bold. Bulk. Bold. Bulk. Wait, 
I think I've got it. Follow me, eggs, to the bulk bin aisles onward. Wow, there are just so many bins. But which one is the right one? How would we know? Um, Shell, remember how the clue said to look for something bold. Do you think Meg is hiding in there? Bold coffee. Of course, Peg, of course. Knock, knock. We know you're in there, Meg. Eggs, shoulder stack unite. Oh, hi. I thought you were never going to find me. Nice work, Shell. Glad you found your way out of the carton for once and into the world. Thanks, Meg, but it wasn't just me. We found you as a group, and now we're back together again. Oof. You know, looking for eggs is fun. Finding eggs is more fun. But the most 